Hi. Let me get this open. All right. Howdy, my name is Sarah Stubbs. I'm a Psych 107 student, and I did my diagnosis on John Nash from A Beautiful Mind. Now, A Beautiful Mind is a film set in the mid-1900s, about 1950 to 1960, um, with kind of themes of World War II, the after effects of it, and kind of going into the Cold War being um, kind of a mild theme throughout. Um, definitely something that's on the minds of all of the characters. Um, the context and culture is Princeton, a very Ivy League upper class atmosphere. And the film follows John Nash, the main character, as he is a student at Princeton, growing up to be a professor and researcher, very accomplished academic at Princeton, um, but then of course also suffering with schizophrenia. Now, schizophrenia as defined in the DSM is defined by its symptoms. Um, and they include delusions, hallucinations, disorganized speech and behavior, those being the positive symptoms and negative symptoms being effective flattening, elutia or avolition. These are kind of, um, flattening would be no facial expression, elutia would be um, sort of word salad and avolition would be lack of motivation. Now the DSM-5 says that a patient would have to experience two or more of the positive symptoms for at least one month to be considered schizophrenic. And John Nash, um, he does experience uh, all of the symptoms that were listed um, in the film, and he experiences it for more than a month. So um, kind of the definition of what schizophrenia is, is more defined by its symptoms because the exact causes are unknown. Um, we know that it causes a person to experience um, perceptual experiences, which occur in the absence of external stimuli. The main driver of this being hallucinations, um, thinking that there's someone there and there's actually not. Something else in schizophrenia that scientists have confirmed is that dopamine regulation um, is disrupted. But again, it's not a cause of schizophrenia. It is more of a symptom and result. So the context in which, in which John Nash is in, I've kind of covered this a little bit in the description, but again, a very upper class, high and mighty uh, atmosphere at the Ivy League community. It was normal to be intelligent, odd, antisocial for these professors to avoid people because they thought that they were smarter and better. Um, so Nash didn't exactly stick out as he was growing into adulthood. Um, his symptoms sort of became apparent when he married his wife, Alicia, and began to have mental breakdowns when he was. Um, given the opportunity to speak in lecture halls about his, um, about his original theories. Now, as the symptoms became more apparent, uh, the reactions weren't positive, I would say, because mental health is not as um, accepted and kind of the awareness was not as celebrated in this time period as it is now. Um, so people were less understanding, I'd say, to Nash's um, disorder. Now some evidence for Nash having schizophrenia would be um, number one, his delusions. Delusions are sort of beliefs that a person with schizophrenia has that are false. Um, they're known to be grandiose. So Nash believed himself to be saving America and helping them win the war by deciphering encoded messages in magazine clippings. And he would mail these classified documents to an abandoned mailbox, which he believed the government was receiving and using to America's advantage. Um, and the second piece of evidence I have would be for his hallucinations. Um, his roommate, Charles, and a little girl that he thought was Charles's niece were two more positive hallucinations that um, they were kind of his mind's way of giving him friends when he was unable to make friends on his own very well. 
And then William, which was kind of a man who dressed in all black, he was the leader of um, Nash's delusions, led Nash to believe he was doing top secret government work um, when he really wasn't. Um, as I go into the treatment plan, I want to emphasize schizophrenia does not yet have its own cure-all medication because its origins remain a mystery. As for the treatment plan, I would prescribe antipsychotics as well as anti-anxiety or antidepressants to Nash to help control his um, episodes and his symptoms. I would also um, suggest he do a psychosocial therapy, which helps patients with schizophrenia kind of integrate themselves into reality and help them form relationships um, and overcome that antisocial characteristic. And lastly, I would probably describe electroconvulsive therapy while it was shown in the movie um, as appearing a little bit unethical because his body was receiving really bad kind of effects from thrashing around as the electricity was going through his brain. Um, modernly, the treatment is a lot better and it would never be given to a patient without consent. And it's also considered a very last resort solution. So while I would prescribe ECT to Nash if he consented to it um, and he was enduring major psychosis, I probably would not prescribe it um, as readily as Dr. Rosen, Nash's psychologist, prescribed it to him in the film. Lastly, I want to cover a broader perspective. I do believe this film offered a lot of awareness about the disease, and I think it showed the ups and downs of it. Um, but I also do think that Nash was in a very good place with a great caretaker, his wife, and ready access to medication and help. Um, and he was in a more upper class society. So he was able to get those treatments. Well, many people then and modernly um, do not have the money or they don't have the support that Nash had, and they unfortunately end up homeless or imprisoned with this disease, um, which is heartbreaking and a whole nother issue. But I do think that it is important to have a perspective on the whole disease and the effects it has on all of its patients, um, rather than just focusing on someone who had great care and was able to overcome some of the worst of it and um, live with schizophrenia not as their identity, but as something that was simply part of them. Um, thank you.